gathering hymn is in the faith we sing, number 2193. The Lord, listen to your children praying, and we'll do it three times. <laughs> 2193. We gather today knowing there are people in our world who are surrounded by violence and conflict on every side. Our work of peace, peace begins with prayer. We gather today knowing there are people in our community who feel lost, alone, abandoned, and forgotten. Our work of love begins with prayer. We gather today knowing there are people in this place, this neighborhood, this world that we all share will experience overwhelming grief, despair, and sorrow. Our work of hope begins with prayer. We gather not to look away from the world, but to witness the needs of our neighbors through the lens of God's love. May we be a people who pray, and out of our praying, to do the work of bringing peace, love, and hope. To all we 
And our prayer of confession is read in unison. O God of passion, if you kept a record of our sins, who could stand? We come before you with our brokenness and our wounds for all to see. We bring our anger, our bitterness, our unwholesome talk, and our deceitfulness. We try to do good, but sometimes fail. We choose to do evil, and sometimes succeed. Keep your promise to forgive us when we confess to you completely. Without you, we have no hope. And our words of assurance again read in unison. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and will forgive us. God provides freely in the bread of heaven all the mercy we need for life everlasting. The good news is forgiveness in the name of Christ Jesus. And our statement of faith is found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 886 to be read in unison. <clears throat> We believe in God, the creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe in God, the Lord, and in the We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough and all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory to God on high and on earth peace. And our next hymn is uh, Jesus' Name Above All Names, and that is found in the Faith We Sing on page 2071.
Today our first reading is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 18, verses 5 through 9, verse 15, and verses 31 through 33. Please pray with me for illumination of God's message. All embracing God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. 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 And this is the reading. The king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently with, for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor-bearers, surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The stories of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. And please rise as you're comfortably able for the second reading. The second reading today is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger, and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. This morning I'm going to talk a little bit about the book of Samuel and then a little bit about the Ephesians and then just a smite of now. Do you ever think of how scripture has evolved? Between the time of the book of Samuel, which was 1,000 years before the Common Era, or when the letter 
to the Ephesians became available to the followers of Christ about 40 years after Christ was crucified and rose from the dead. Well, I've thought about it a little bit this week, a lot this week. Is there really some progress that we've made in human behavior? It took that long to start with David as king and end up with no king. With God sending a loving part of himself, Christ, his son, instead. How far have humans come from that time, the writing of Ephesians to now, which is about 2,000 years later? How do we live and love as 21st century Christians? In the time of David, King David, we see a man who was far, far from perfect as the leader of the Israelite peoples. We know some of his sins. We dealt with, or at least listened to, some of his sins in chapter 12, the last time I was up here giving the message. And uh, that was, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Now, does anybody remember what some of David's sins were? Bathsheba. <laughs> yeah, he was an adulterer. Okay, he also was a slanderer. And he overstepped his kingship by forgetting what? That God was really the king. He became a lazy, unwilling king, and instead of going out leading his armies in battle, he stayed home, which was one of the reasons he had a problem with Bathsheba. He was very involved with his favoritism amongst his sons, and he didn't teach them to respect God, because he was busy with all the other ungodly things he was planning on doing. Does anybody know how many wives David had? A lot. A lot. He had eight that are listed. And he has 18 or 19 sons listed from those eight wives. And then he also has one daughter, at least only one daughter, one legitimate daughter. Her name was Tamar. And the only reason we know about her is because she was raped by one of her brothers, half brothers. Yeah. So this is all, you know, right under the nose of King David. Now for a short rundown of what throws David's world upside down between chapter 12, which was a couple of weeks ago, and the second book of Samuel, chapter 18, which we are looking at today. Uh, David's first son, anybody remember his name? Emma, was a bad boy. He grew up to be lusty, like his father, and of a low character, unlike his father. David did not teach him to be respectful of the family, so Amnon committed rape on David's daughter Tamar when she was still a virgin. Now, David's third son, we don't know about the second. We know it's the second one's name, but we don't know what he did. So, his third son was Absalom, and he murdered the first son because Absalom was the full sister of Tamar. And when his father didn't do anything about Amnon raping him, David didn't do anything at all. Absalom took care of the punishment by killing him. 
Then Absalom fled so that David would not kill him. And after about four or five years, David forgave Absalom and let him come home. Then Absalom turned away from his father after he'd just been forgiven. And he tries to take David's throne. And David has to flee Jerusalem because Absalom has become a favorite of the people by lying to them and becoming a very popular man with the people. There were battles back and forth. David finally wins back his full kingship and is able to move back into Jerusalem. And Absalom does not win the war. By this time, David wanted Absalom to be treated gently, and this is where chapter 18 starts. Spared from death, so we must think that David really had forgiven him. And that brings us to today's reading. David tells his victorious, victorious troops to be kind to Absalom. David's troops are not very happy about this because they're fighting this battle, and Absalom is leading the opposing troops, trying to steal the kingship. And how many, this was in the reading, about how many people were killed that day? Okay, 20,000. I thought I'd make this sort of interactive, but maybe not today. Maybe not today. Okay, David tells his victorious troops to be kind to Absalom. David's troops aren't very happy, and as they bring Absalom back through the forest, what happens to him? His hair did him in. His hair did him in. Yes, Absalom had very long hair, and he was riding on a mule, and I guess there were some guards around him, ten young men. And as he went through the forest, his hair caught on a tree, a branch, and the mule kept going, leaving Absalom what? Hanging. Hanging, not around the neck. He was very much alive. But uh, Joab, who was the head of David's troop, Joab took some branches and knocked him down on the ground. He's still alive. And now David had to said, be cheerful to bring my son back alive. They killed him. All ten of them jumped him at once, and then they brought him back dead. Now, this is where I'm going to delay or quit talking about David, because I don't think there's anything more to be said about David. We know God let him be king, and we know that he was very upset when his own troops killed his son, Absalom. Was David distraught? Uh -huh. What did he say? Absalom, my son, my son. I wish that I had died instead of you, my son. Okay, so that's the first scripture. Now jump over to Ephesians chapter 4 verses 5 to verses chapter 4 verses 25 through chapter 5 verses 2. A little more than a thousand years has now passed and it's the time of Jesus or a little bit beyond the time of Jesus. Uh, Jesus has been a rabbi, a teacher, a preacher, has been crucified for sins he did not commit. And God had raised him back up, first alive, and then raised him into heaven. Now, in this letter to Ephesians, what is 
being taught. Speak the truth to your neighbor. You may be angry, but don't sin. In other words, don't hurt your neighbor. You can talk. But don't say bad things about your neighbor. Don't hurt your neighbor. Do not make room for the devil in your life. And I always say, when it's time for me to put one of these talks together, that I have the devil on one corner and an angel on another. But today I didn't. So you just have to put up with that. But other things it says in Ephesians, if you steal, give it up. In other words, if you're a thief, go get a job. And if you can't get a job, do something with your hands so you have something to share with the needy. If you can't give money to the needy or a job to the needy or food to the needy, then at least what do you have to do? Oh my. You need to have something to share with the needy, which means that if you don't have a job, you can't have money. So you can't give the needy, in fact, you're probably needy yourself. But you can still help the needy. What are things that the needy need besides money? Come on. This, just pull it out of the air, guys. Food and shelter. What else? A listening ear. A listening ear. Anything Compassion. else? Compassion. Compassion. Prayer. Prayer, yes. Lord, listen to the people praying before anything else comes to prayer before anything else. You have to get right with God before you can get right with your neighbor. Especially if your neighbor isn't all that interesting or compassionate back. Okay, but you need to give something to the needy. Speak only what is good for building up. Be joyous that your words and works may Give grace to those who hear them. And do not turn your Holy Spirit into something less than what God intended, which was God living within you. Do not be bitter and full of wrath and anger and slander and malice. Now, that all happened back in the time of David, too. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving as God in Christ has forgiven you. Or, as a thousand years before, as David forgave Absalom. Be tenderhearted. Be compassionate. Now, be imitators of God. No, you are beloved children. Beloved children of God. And all others are also beloved children. If you are Israeli, be compassionate. If you are Palestinian, be compassionate. Not only to other Israelites or to other Palestinians, but to each other. I'm not going to get into politics. Walk in Christ's love. Christ gave himself up for all of us. He was the perfect human sacrifice to God. And he really was a human sacrifice because he came down from his position as God's son to being fully human. And he had to go through everything we go through and worse. Now, here we are 2,000 years later. Now, you see, we went 1,000 years later 
from David to Ephesians. Now, from Ephesians to now, it's 2,000 years. And we had Jesus. And we have become Christians. And we say, I believe. I believe in Christ. Now, in those 2,000 years later, how much have we learned from Scripture and what progress have we made? And how are we different now? What could human beings have learned in those 2,000 years? What could we have learned? That whole list of things I read out that came in Ephesians. Now, during the next five or so months, what do we United States of America Christians need to remember? I'm going to be quiet and let you tell me what we need to remember in the next five months or so. Love because we know you're different. Love between people who are different and for people who are different. Anything else? Turn off the news. <laughs> turn, off the, turn off the election news. Yes, turn off the election news. Okay. How far have we come since that little boy with a sling killed Goliath? And he grew up to be King David? That's about 3,000 years. How much are we better? Sometimes not much. But sometimes there's a world of difference because now we have Christ. We believe. Christ and what Christ taught us. There's hope. There's hope. And there's joy in knowing that God loves us. Have we evolved enough since Christ died for us? Over these next weeks and months, what can we do to be all that God asked us to be? Or at least will we try? What can we try? To be loving toward those who have different opinions than us? Yes. And not to push those opinions down to the ground. I said prayer. Prayer. Our service started today. Lord, hear your children pray. Before anything else, center yourself. I ask you to do this because it could be a real mess. If all the Christians who say they're Christians pray that we all can get along, we can. And even in our small group, if we have differences, if we pray together, you'll find that the things that are a little bit different than our neighbors still make our neighbors love, love, love. And I'm trying so hard not to get political, but it's been a very political week. And I just want us to remember that it's the prayer that makes the difference. God will take care of us, but we have to start with the prayer. So please pray. It's the only thing we can do better than 3,000 years ago. It never says David prayed. And the letter to Ephesians was saying, you've got to learn how to pray. You've got to start to pray. And now prayer is for us. So that's all I'm going to say today. I got up at 2 o'clock, so that's the best I can do. Okay? Amen. 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 Uh, now, now I have to get all the way over here. This is my turn to leave. Leave. Okay. So I need that.
The next hymn is People Need the Lord. It's in the faith we sing. Number 20 to 44. Paul Marker gets ready. You can get ready. And we really do need the Lord. So let's go for it. 20 to 44. Besides love and compassion, we're going to pray for air conditioning. And please pray for air conditioning for my niece's bus. That's too humid. I can't breathe. 
I don't even use the swamp cooler. It, it's not efficient enough. It's been sitting up there not used for 31 years. Because it can't breathe in the humidity. I have to use the air conditioner. But anyway, dear Lord provided that for me. Okay, any other choice? Um, Alicia's daughter um, had a baby. Amy. Alicia's daughter? Amy. 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 Amy had a baby. Alicia's daughter, Amy. I think his name is Lucas. Uh -huh. Yeah. But he, he looked beautiful in the picture. It's one of the songs that she sang. Okay. And Alicia, Alicia requested continued prayers for Amy as she's um, recovering from the birth. Okay. Continuous prayers for Amy as she recovers from the birth. Okay, other, other joys? Concerns? Let's have a concern. Yes. Well, I reached out to a childhood friend, a high school friend of mine yesterday, because I always remember it as her birthday. I can't remember half the world's birthday, but I remember hers for some reason. And she told me that she's been suffering with colon cancer. So just prayers for Marcy. Prayers for Marcy. Okay, any other? Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us. We pray to you. We ask you to bless us. And we accept the blessings. And sometimes we don't know what to do with them, but we accept them. And then we know that you love us. But also, dear Lord, when we don't think you hear us, you do. And that's also a time that we need each other. We need to be open to tell each other that we're hurting, that we need compassion. And dear Lord, we thank you that in our group, in our small group, we have mighty prayer. We have mighty prayers for each other, or the people that we don't get along with, for the people in our town, for the people in our country, and how we get divided every four years. And put us back together, dear Lord, as we thank you and give you praise. Amen. Amen. And we're going to have a, a prayer shawl dedicated at this time. Come on, go a little closer to me. Yes. Okay. If you want to come up, you can come up. Yes, please, please come up and um, join us in laying hands on the shawl. And this is for um, Mel's daughter, Joy. She, um, she is a kindergarten teacher, and this summer she was diagnosed with severe rheumatoid arthritis. She, her hands swell up so much she can't even make a, a fist. And um, she's going back. I think she went start school this week, I think. <clears throat> and so she's concerned about things that she needs to, to do. Uh, she does have an assistant with her in the classroom, so she thinks she's going to be able to pretty much do most things, but it's painful. We know, those of us who know um, Lorraine, um, know how painful it can be. And the verse that goes with the, the prayer shawl, this shawl is given especially to you in hopes it will bring strength, comfort, peace, and joy. It started with a needle and some yarn, and stitches were added. Lots of prayers were included, too. So when you are sad, hurting, lonely, or blue, wrap this shawl around you. It represents God's love, for he careth for you. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. 
And that's Isaiah 12, 2 and 3. Lord, we want to lift up joy to you today. And um, we just ask, Lord, that you would be with her, help her to uh, be able to do the things that she needs to do. Help the, uh, her doctors know how to treat her and, and what might work for her. She does have one new uh, prescription that will take a few weeks to, to start working, and we just pray, Lord, that that will help her to be able to do her job, to ease the pain, and um, help her to get along. That Just uh, guide her doctors in, in um, helping her to find ways to, um, to exist with the rheumatoid arthritis. We would ask for healing for her, um, and we ask that you would wrap your arms around her, let her know that she is loved, that you love her, and that there are people who care and are praying for her. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And again, this will be on the table, so be sure and sign it before you leave today. Okay, time to pass the peace. And I've got three different things holding me in this very place. So if you want to pass your peace to me, just move on in.
Rise if you're completely able uh, for the doxology number 94 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
for school supplies for Sherman Indian School in Riverside. It's a boarding high school, and it's one of the places that Methodists love to put anything extra because they're always in need of something. And Barbara Wood uh, said that she was going to um, give a comforter in honor of Jackie Smith, who passed away but taught it. Sure. And then my niece, who goes to the Catholic Church but is always in touch with what I'm doing, uh, went out and bought three more comforters. So we've got lots of pencils and comforters. So if you would like to add some uh, binder paper, some binders, some report covers, things like that, just the kind of things that high school students need. And I don't have the list with me. I keep promising to bring it, and I don't, because you can't find it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all will be taken to Sherman in the next two weeks. So maybe two more weeks, and then it's all, I mean, Kimberly's gonna take it all to Sherman. Okay, and we're in the, in the fall, I think the first week of September. I'm gonna start the, um, the Friday afternoon I can make it 4 o'clock or I can make it 4.30, according to how the people here who want to come to Bible study want it to be. And it's, I'm going to use a, uh, I'm not supposed to say what it is, but I'm going to use the, uh, the Chosen, which is a video. I bought all four, all four of the uh, seasons that are out already. And one or two a week and we can use those and we'll have them right in, right in here by the TV because this is the TV that will take a, what we need to play it on, a CD player. Are you planning to have a book that has an outline? I have um, a Bible study book, just one though. They're $15 a piece and I figure I can cut it down and make it good questions and such for you to think about. And uh, I don't want to copy it because that's not legal and I don't want to do that. But if I study it and then relay what is important for us to look at, I think that'll work. Anyway, so let me know if 4 or 4.30 on Friday will work for you. And if it won't, uh, you know, I'm hoping to bring other people in who don't come here but are, are Christians or want to know about Christianity, it's a very good series. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it and also learn from it. So anyway, first week in September, I'm going to be there. No more falls for me. I'm hardly ever on my feet now. So it's not going to be real easy for me to fall. Um, I was wondering whether there would be any kind of like a public service announcement or something like in the paper or... Well, we can't use the name of the, the chosen oh. in the paper. Oh. That's, that's a... Copyright infringement. Copyright infringement, and that's definitely what they say you can't do. But you can say uh, a current uh, video series about Christianity. Say something like that. But uh, you can't use. But in talking to people, you can always say the chosen, and it's very, very good. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay. Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah, this is an announcement, but I, I got a question for you. Yeah. Have you heard from Connie Johnson? No. Oh, I did. I talked to her this week trying to think of what date it was. We talked for quite a while. You know, she lost her last sister, Virginia, and they were quite close. And she's pretty cut up about it. 
Um, and so in calls or in things, you probably appreciate it. Have you been trying to get a hold of her? Yeah, yeah. But she, she and I talk quite a while on her phone. Okay. Yeah, people don't think of me as the first person to call. And that's okay because I am a pastor, but you are all pastors to me. So in the bulletin, it just says Connie Johnson's sister. Her name is Roberta. Yeah. Well, if anybody goes down to see her, I'd like to go. Okay. Any any other uh, announcements? Well, I'm just looking at the prayer request. Mm -hmm. um, it says Joyce's sister, Roberta, and I'm wondering if that's Connie's sister, Roberta, yeah, because Connie's Joyce's sister. sister is Carol, yes. the one that we've been praying for. Well, isn't Carol here? Yes, Carol well, Stein. She is that's... listed, but yes. it says Joyce's sister, Roberta. That should be Connie's sister, yeah. Roberta. Connie's sister, Roberta. And also add to that list Amy yeah. and Baby. Okay, give me some more names. Lucas. Lucas. I think it's L-U-C-A-S. Okay. Yeah. Although he's, he was in the neonatal, but he's home. So I think the baby's doing okay, but. Um, Amy and baby Lucas. But Amy is the one that needs prayer still. Okay. And then I also talked to Julie. She mm -hmm. has a lot of health concerns that are, that yes. are bothering her on top of grieving. Mm -hmm. deeply for Greg. So please keep her in our prayers. And if you have time, to call Julie Pop. They haven't been here because they were afraid of coming out and getting germs. And I don't blame them. Both of them were so, so ill for so long, starting with the COVID. And I do have Julie's current phone number. The number that is in the book is an old number. It's okay. not correct, so. So if you, uh, if you want Julie's phone number so you can call her and just chat. Yeah. <clears throat> it makes her feel she would, better. She would to know very much appreciate that. Loved. Okay. Get Julie's number. And there was one other name. There were two, actually. The lady with the rheumatoid arthritis? Joy. Joy. <clears throat> and there was a lady with. Answer. Marcy. Marcy. Okay. It's okay to have just first names. And David and Alicia, <clears throat> they're both. They're both. A little uh, worse. They're on our list, but pray especially for David and Alicia Blankenship. They're members of our, our parish here. But um, they've never come because of health concerns, and they live in 29. They were members of the Joshua Tree Church with Art and Marilyn, and me, because I was over there too, every week playing for them. So, uh, that's good. Let's have uh, just the benediction now. You don't have to stand for it, but if you stand for it, you'll already be standing for let there be peace on earth. So if you get your UMW hymnal out with the let there be peace on earth and give yourself a stand up if you can. Dear Lord, we ask you to pray with us. And dear Lord, thank you for praying for us. I know that your compassion and your love is so much greater than ours because it's constant. And dear Lord, be with us this week, every day, every minute, as we pray for each other. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. 431. trying to turn this off so that I don't sing in here. No voice anymore. Let there be peace on earth and
Thank you.